More political fallout tonight over Ontario Premier Doug Ford's plans to use private for-profit clinics to alleviate that province's surgical backlog. The NDP is calling on the federal government to take a stand for public health care. Let's bring in the leader of that party now, Jagmeet Singh. Hi, Mr. Singh. Good to have you in studio tonight. Thank you. Good to be here. I had the opportunity to just speak with Intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominic LeBlanc, and I put your concern to him and said, look, are you willing to withhold funding if what Doug Ford's doing doesn't comply with the Canada Health Act? He said... In essence, I'm paraphrased, I don't have any reason not to believe Doug Ford, that Doug Ford insists it will comply with the Canada Health Act. Doesn't he have a point there? I think we need to go beyond just the Canada Health Act. What Doug Ford is, is proposing is to invest more of our public dollars into private delivery of health care. And we know the crisis that we're up against is one of a health care worker shortage. Having more money in a private system is just going to cannibalize workers. We have ERs that are overrun. Those ER nurses and healthcare workers are going to be put into operating rooms in a for-profit clinic, which is not going to alleviate the stress. In fact, it's going to be more costly. It's going to increase the delays in the public system. And it's going to be a question of lack of quality, which is what we always see in a for-profit delivery of healthcare. And the real question is, where does the prime minister stand? If he says he's going to defend public health care and he's allowing this to happen in Ontario, to me, it looks like the Prime Minister is not interested in defending public health care, which I think is wrong. But this isn't something that is unique to Ontario. In 2021, 13,000 surgeries were performed in public, uh, rather private clinics in British Columbia. Should the Prime Minister also, also then be withholding funding for health care in that province? Well, in British Columbia, the, prime, the, the NDP government has acknowledged that they need to move in the opposite direction. They think that there should but be less... But they're still doing it. They believe there should be less uh, delivery of, of health care through the private system. And what Doug Ford is announcing now is a massive investment and increase in private delivery, uh, for-profit delivery, which is the wrong thing to do. And at a time when we're negotiating health care, the Prime Minister should use a leverage we have to say, no, we want to see more investments in the public system, particularly when what Doug Ford's proposing isn't going to make things better. And it's not just me that's saying it. It's the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Ontario the Ontario Nurses Association, the very doctors and nurses that we rely on are saying this is actually going to make things worse. But I'm going to give you a list now of people who say it's not, that it's the right thing to do. Anthony Dale, the president and CEO of the Ontario Hospital Association. Dr. Rose Zacharias, the president of the Ontario Medical Association. Dr. Andy Smith, the president and CEO of Sunnybrook Health Sciences Centre. Dr. Kevin Smith, the president and CEO of the University Health Network. They say that this is just expanding on something that already exists and it will address the surgical backlog. Well, I could put those up against all of the nurses of Ontario and all of the doctors of Ontario. Pretty easy to say that. I mean, all these are the people, some of the doctors of Ontario. But this is the association that speaks with the voice of all of the nurses, the Ontario Nurses Association and the College of Physicians, who are saying very clearly, and I think very logically, that putting more money into the private system isn't going to deal with the actual problem, which is a lack of healthcare workers. How is this going to in any way deal with that problem? In fact, what it's going to do, and we know it's going to happen, it's going to exacerbate the problems. It's going to increase delays. And it's really like putting oil on the fire and making it burn worse. And Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau, has the match. And he said uh, that he's okay with this, pretty much, with what we're seeing so far. And that's wrong. But is the Prime Minister really in a position to say, hey, you know what, it's happening in other provinces, but they're not saying they want to do more of it, so I'll still give them money, but you're saying you want to do more of it, so I won't give you money. Like, do you see how that's such a slippery slope? Well, right now, it's a question of the expansion. Uh, this, what Doug Ford is presenting is not just status quo. It's a changing legislation, from what I understand in the announcement. It's changing the scope of what is allowed to happen. It's massively expanding and investing in the private delivery, which means a couple of things. We know, after the pandemic, that for-profit long-term care homes are where the worst conditions of care existed. And it's not surprising. To make money, you have to cut corners, whether it's cutting hours of work, cutting the pay, and that means worse outcomes for patients. In a crisis, a different. it's in a the wrong thing to do. But in a, in a long-term care home, for example, if I go to a private one, I send my dad there, I have to pay for that out of pocket. This is not me paying out of pocket for my cataract surgery. This is the government paying a private clinic to deliver, to perform that surgery for me. There, it's kind of a false equivalency that you're presenting. I'm not saying you're wrong about long-term care homes. And I understand the concern about for-profit entities operating things that have to do with our health care. But, but, but it's not an equivalent. Well, I'm not suggesting it's an equivalent. I'm suggesting that the, the trend we've seen is when there's for-profit delivery of health care, some of the dollars that are spent go towards profit. All the dollars don't go towards care. 
and that inevitably means a less less quality of care. Every dollar that we publicly spend is not going to, to a, a solution to make someone's health better. Some of that money is going towards profit. And the problem is when we're in a crisis, when we've got a serious problem, should we be spending any of our money to line the pockets of, of rich investors, making people richer, or should every dollar we spend go towards the care of our loved ones, care of children, care for people? Uh, that is a pretty easy answer for me. Every dollar should be spent on care, not on profit. Can, can though the province, can they walk and chew gum at the same time? The issue that the province says, that the, the Ford government says, is that the capacity in the public health system doesn't exist. That there isn't, uh, you know, enough uh, operating time, for example, in those operating rooms. That there needs to be additional capacity added through these private clinics to address that. Do, do, you, do you concede that that could be true? Not at all. In fact, we've got a, a public system with the operation, operating rooms, with the facilities, with the equipment, uh, there's a lack of resources in terms of staffing. And so to suggest that we can put more money into the private system to deal with the lack of human health care resources is actually very illogical. It makes no sense at all. All of the evidence that we've seen so far is that the problem in our health care system isn't a lack of uh, facility, uh, emergency rooms, hospitals, it's a lack of resources in terms of people. And so to suggest that we can put more money in the private system, it's somehow going to deal with the human health care resource problem, it's not going to solve the problem at all. And that's why it's very credible when people say, in fact, this is going to make things worse. You're going to have emergency room uh, nurses that are going to be poached to work in operating rooms for cataracts. How is that going to bring down the emergency room wait times? How is that well, going to help children's hospitals? Because still going to be doing cataract surgeries there. But I take your point. I just want to, we have just a few seconds left. And I want to get to the fact that you're in Ottawa because you're meeting with caucus over the next few days. You know where I'm going likely with this question, but you keep saying I want the federal government to do something. You are in an agreement that keeps the Liberals in power right now. How definitive are you on this? Do you, you know, if, if, if the federal the federal government continues to give more money to Ontario for health care and Ontario goes ahead with this plan, what happens to your support? We are right now fighting to make sure that we defend our public health care system. Uh, we want to make it very clear that it's wrong for the Prime Minister to support what Doug Ford's doing. And Pierre Polyev is cheering this on the sidelines, saying it's great that privatization is happening. We're the ones saying, no, we need to defend our public health care system, and we're going to continue to fight for it. Respectfully, that's not really an answer. What, what does that mean? Like, what is the value of that agreement? Well, what we've shown in the past is we've been able to fight for things that initially both the Liberals and Conservatives were opposed to, and then eventually people actually received that support. Dental care in but the last nine months... But that dental care was very specific, sorry to interrupt, in that agreement. There is nothing... There are broad strokes about working with the provinces on health care and defending health care. There is nothing specific about it staying exactly the way it is in Ontario. So one example that we have is the GST rebate that we increased. That sent over 10 million Canadians more than $400. That was something that was not in agreement. Initially, the Liberals and the Conservatives were opposed to it. We fought hard. And in November, Canadians received that amount. We know that in nine months, we're able to achieve a lot for Canadians. Uh, we're looking to continue to do that, to deliver for Canadians, to give them the help they need, to invest in our health care system, our public system with more, work, with more health care workers, recruitment, retention, and training new workers. That's what we need to do, so, not invest in the private solution. So no election in 2023? <laughs> our goal is to continue to fight for Canadians. That's so, my focus. So no election? Right, right now, that's, uh, there's no election right now. Okay, Mr. Singh, thank you very much for coming into studio. Appreciate it. That's NDP <laughs> leader Jagmeet Singh. The front bench is sticking around, is coming up, I should say. They're going to weigh in on what we just heard from Mr. Singh. Up next, though, the political stories of the day. The list when we return.